Hey guys, this is Jason, Colorado Mountain Man Survival. Today we're going to talk a little bit about traps and snares. First we're going to talk about materials you can use for the snare. Um, your rope is the easiest to work with. Uh, it cinches down easily and doesn't release. Um, like I say, it's pliable and easy to, easy to set up. Uh, the next one is baling wire, which is also easy to work with, but it requires more tension for it to uh, tighten down. Um, this one doesn't work well with a, trayer, uh, sorry, a snare setup because it does take quite a bit of pressure. Um, it's best to use it as a standalone. You stake this piece into the ground and you set up your snare along your game trail and whenever the animal goes through it, it will tighten down on it. Um, but like I say, it doesn't slide as quickly in a trap setup, so I would not use something like this as my primary choice. Um, the reason you would use it is because an animal cannot chew through this wire as easily as it can with the rope. So if you catch something with rope and you do not get it around the neck, it's gonna chew through this rope. Um, finally, uh, what I like to use is the um, cable rope. It is the hardest to work with though. You're gonna need to set it up ahead of time. Um, The cable rope, you're going to have to put a loop in it and it's not going to hold by itself and you can't really tie it. So you need to, like I said, you need to set it up ahead of time. And the problem with the cable rope is that it doesn't cinch down as easy if the uh, weight comes off of it, it, you see it immediately releases. So what you need to do is set up a locking mechanism. So on this one over here, I call this my penny trap. Um, as you can see, I still have my loop and I've got the loop on this end that I can use to anchor it to the ground or to the branch or whatever I need and I have it hooked it to. But as you can see, there's the penny on here. Cinch it down and it doesn't release. The only way I can release it is grab that penny and this will go down as tight as you want it. Um, obviously, I'm not gonna pull it too tight on my arm, but it releases just by releasing that penny. This is my preferred choice because the animal is going to have a hard time chewing through this cable rope and it can hold a large amount of weight. Now I'm going to show you how to set up the traps. The first trap I'm going to show you, you don't even need a snare. This is the figure four deadfall. There are four major components to the figure four deadfall. You've got your pivot, this one is going to determine how high your deadfall sits up off the ground. The next one is the main lever. This one is going to be holding most of the weight, so this one needs to be your thickest piece. And then your trigger. Your trigger needs to be long enough for the animal to step on. And this one you're going to whittle about halfway into this notch, so it's got to be thick enough where it's not going to break on you but you don't want it too large. Um, and you need this one to be fairly strong. So you don't want to go with, uh, well, a pine tree, a green pine bough is kind of weak and I'm in a pine forest. I don't have very much hardwood. So it's a little bit more difficult for me to determine uh, or to find a piece of wood for all three of these components. Now I did use mostly dead wood for this, um, really because I didn't want to cut down a, a live tree but just use what you have available and then of course the deadfall this is going to be your heavy weight uh, now I didn't have a lot of uh, downed dead trees so I took 
a few of them and lash them together. Uh, lashing them together like this is going to give you uh, a couple benefits. First of all, it's going to give you more weight. Uh, second of all, it's going to keep this log, log from rolling on you when you get it up on top of the pivot, well, up on top of the, the main lever. And um, also it's going to give you more surface area. So when it comes down, it's going to be more likely to land on your intended prey. So the first piece we're going to talk about is the pivot. Now, the, like I said before, the pivot determines how high up your deadfall sits off the ground. Now your pivot, you want it to move freely. You don't want it to get wedged in the ground. So I've buried this rock to keep it from sinking in the ground. And now the reason I bury this rock is so when the deadfall comes down, it doesn't stop on the top of the rock. So it needs to be at ground level and it keeps the pivot from sinking into the ground. Now obviously you want to use a flat rock so the pivot will sit on it easily. Okay, now when you're carving the pivot, obviously I've already whittled it, but you need a beveled end. And you're gonna whittle it down to this side. So, you know, just shave it off and you want this side to be flat because this is gonna sit on your main lever like this. So you need it to hook in there like that. Um, your bottom piece needs to be flat so it, it, so it sits on that rock easily. Now from your bevel here, you come straight down and you want to shave it flat on this side at the bottom. So we got our bevel flat on this side. Now your trigger is going to lock in like this. So depending on which side you put your trigger on, you need to do flat on the opposite side. So I got a flat side here and I got a flat side here. So the trigger, when we notch this out, will hook on this piece. Now you don't see this in many uh, other videos, but when that trigger slides down for this particular um, pivot, it's going to catch this entire way down because we got a square edge here and here. I'll turn it so you can see we got this square edge here and here. So in order to eliminate that entire piece where it to catch at, I mean, you because you want it to release easily below where the trigger catches. So my trigger is going to catch in this small area right here. I want to get rid of this entire edge. So I haven't done that yet but this is kind of an important piece that it makes it so the trigger doesn't snag. Uh, chances are it's not going to anyways, but there's always that possibility and your, your prey is gonna get away. So we're gonna flatten this out and round it. So we're gonna want this all rounded along here, but flat up on this edge. Now your this figure four is one of the hardest to master. So you're gonna probably not get it right the first time. Just keep working at it you'll figure it out. Everything doesn't have to be exact on this, but just keep trying at it. It takes practice and you really want to practice before you get out in a survival situation so that you're not trying to figure it out in the mountains when you're starving. Um, obviously having a knife is big help, but you can make this trap with nothing but a sharp rock. But uh, my theory is uh, be prepared so you shouldn't be out here without the tools that you require anyways. But you know, everything's not always perfect. So as you can see, I'm rounding this edge out. I got a flat edge right here and a flat edge here. So when that trigger falls, it doesn't catch this entire way down. So again, we got our bevel and on the same side as this bevel comes down, flat edge and then your trigger comes on this side, you need a flat edge for it to hook. Flat edge on the bottom so it balances on the rock. Your next piece is gonna be your main lever. Now your main lever sits up on top of your pivot just like this. So you need to cut your notch in the top here. So work your way down so you're whittling like this. Obviously you don't wanna cut into your hand. So you're whittling like this and then down. So you got it flat 
on this side coming in this way so it sits just like that um, and then on the back side here again you need to bevel it like this down this way so we're coming in down this way so I'm going to carve it down this way and then on the top piece you want it flat and you might even bevel it a little bit here because this sits on the underside of your deadfall so it needs to fit snug up in that deadfall and keep that log from rolling um, and that's pretty much it for this main lever so this is where it gets its name from the figure four deadfall once you get your trigger in place this is what it's going to look like um, i haven't carved this piece of wood yet but back here we need to put a notch and we need to angle it a little bit so that this piece will hook inside of there and once i get whittling i'll show you how to do it and then so we're going to carve out the back side of this trigger real fast um, where this bevel hits the stick i already started it here a little bit but we're going to finish carving So we're going to carve this down until that bevel will hook in here. Now I've got this kind of saw on the back of my knife, so I'm going to run this back and forth to clean it up inside here a little bit. But once that's good enough so where it hooks just like that, then we're good. Now what we'll do, set up the pivot, the main lever, that backwards. This hooks in here. Now once we get it like this, we need to mark where the trigger hits right here. So at this point, we're going to put another notch on the trigger. So I got it marked with my finger. So right about here, now it doesn't have to be exact, but right about here I'm going to put a notch on the trigger. Now this one's on the top, this one's got to be on the side. So we're going to come, to, I'll mark it here, and then we're going to come in this way for that, where that notch is going to go. Okay, so I've got the notches the way I want it, the back side and on the side we got this notch so that everything fits together. Like this, so your weight is going to go up here. The hard part is getting it to hook together properly. But once you figure it out, there it goes. So the weight sits on here and it binds everything up. And what happens is your prey comes along and it hits this trigger here. You can bait this if you want. Um, if you put like a, a package of peanut butter or honey on this, you know, make sure you tie it down so they don't just grab it and run away. They have to actually fight to get off here, but that's all it takes. So this goes on the rock, it's on the rock so it doesn't sink in the ground. Your main lever up here, your trigger switch, all the grooves match up. And then the deadfall goes on top. So we start out like this. We're going to lift the deadfall on top. Make sure it's holding that weight on there. Hold it down just like this. We hook our trigger on here. And then we gotta balance it. Now here it is all set up. Now it did take me a couple times to get it balanced correctly. Um, when you're doing it, obviously keep your hands and feet and your legs out of the way, especially if you have a really heavy deadfall. Uh, you don't wanna injure yourself while you're setting this up. 
as you can see everything binds in together um, the main pivot is sitting on a rock to keep it from sinking into the ground and the rock like I said before is at ground level so when this falls it doesn't catch on the rock leaving any um, space for the animal to free and then on your bottom below I know you can't see it but below the deadfall you want to make sure you have any debris out of the way that way when this comes crashing down it doesn't catch on anything uh, now your animal is going to come along walk on the ground if you have this baited they're going to want to run up there and grab it now, if you have it tied on there it's going to make it so they have to tug at it instead of just grabbing it and running so if you do bait this make sure you bait it well so they can't or you tie it well so they can't just run off with it so they're going to come running along they're going to hit this trigger and that's it that's your figure fall dead fall trap figure four dead fall trap The next trap I'm going to show you is what I call the toggle release snare. Here are your major components. You're going to need two of your main sticks. These need to have this V-shaped hook on them. And then we're going to pound this side into the ground. And then you're going to need two rails, top rail and a lower. Um, this is the trigger. And then a smaller piece, which I like to call the key. And then I'm going to show you an alternative way to use this trap. You can use it with these small pieces here and we can make it into like a leg snare. And then also we're going to need the uh, rope, uh, the snare, the actual snare part of it. I've already got it up in this tree, tied up. I'm using paracord and my lucky penny snare. So I'll go ahead and start setting this up and you can see what I can do. So we're going to start by pounding these into the ground. Uh, it's got to be long enough so that it's going to go into the ground and give it enough tension where the rope is not going to pull out. This horizontal rail locks between these two so you space it out far enough. Okay, so that's going to sit in there just like that. And then this piece is going to sit down here like this. And your key is going to sit here and bind it all together. Now this is where your rope attaches so it keeps tension on there. And what happens is your animal comes along and it pushes on this bottom rail and it releases that which pulls your snare up and catches your prey. Okay, so I've got my key tied into my snare that's tied into the tree. And then I've got the snare tied into the paracord. So it'll sit in front of this, and when this releases, this will cinch up. So what I do is take my top rail. Okay, this piece goes underneath, just like that. So the rope is on the back side of this rail tied to this key. And then the trigger sits in there just like that. Now since I'm working with it, I'm going to scoot that bottom rail up higher so it doesn't spring on me too easily. And then I take my snare and I'm going to set it up like this so when the animal comes in, it's going to push down on this. Now it's going to take a lot of, of weight because there's a lot of tension on this. So you really need to, uh, if you bait this, make sure it's tied tightly into the stick. If not, um, really, well, when, when you're ready for it to trap, you push this bottom rail down just to the very bottom edge of this key. So all they have to do is barely touch that and it's going to snap it free. Now your other option is to make this into a leg trap or a leg snare. Now you can take and place these in here like this. And 
Now normally you probably wouldn't choose a place with this stump in the way. It just happened where I set up because there's kind of a little trail here. So we're going to put these in place like this. And you can do this entire span across here. And then you can lay your snare right here like this. Now when anything comes along, they step on that trap right there. Again, it's going to fling up. It's going to pull this tight and you're going to catch them. Now most likely you're going to catch something around the, the leg if you do it like this. If you do it without these, you're going to want to set it up like this and you're probably going to get it around the neck. Now you're, something else that you may need to do since you want the animal to come in from this direction is to put a wall of sticks up on the back side of this, clear through the back, so it's going to funnel them in this way, in this direction. So, I'm going to set this up. Now this is a part where it's tricky because you're going to want to lower this bottom rail just enough. Caught my hand there. Again, this goes in here, this goes on the back side. And this rail comes in here and on the back side of the key. And we'll just, it's very delicate, we'll just get that down. Put my snare in place, make sure you're setting it so nothing gets tangled. So we got that set up, your animal comes along. fell out of the stick but an animal it's going to have more to grab hold to and you're going to pull it up in the tree. Okay I've got it set up. We'll set it off one more time. Got a little bit larger piece of wood here so here we go. We got our animal comes along pushes down. There he goes. Now looks like we do need to increase the length of that rope or shorten the length of that rope so it's going to pull that guy up off the ground more. But right now I got him around the neck. He's gonna be struggling and it's around his neck and it's tight and it's not, as you can see, letting go. It's not releasing. I have to grab that penny and pull it to release it. That's it.